Okay, this Agile Nudge is all about sprint planning and specifically the planning we do during the sprint, which is a daily scrum, and also how we capture how the sprint backlog is flowing. As you may know, the one of the techniques that's, that we can use in Scrum is not defined in Scrum, but most people use is the burn down chart. This visualizes that the, what work remains. So on any given day, you can see how you're progressing towards your target completion. You know what your ideal line is, but as we all know in this conceptual age, we, are, we never work linearly. So things happen, we may have a breakthrough. We may actually, in some cases, when I drew this, I didn't include that some cases, work goes up before it goes down. But at any point, you want to know where I am today and what work remains. It's not what we've done, but what we have to do. Sometimes teams can use story points for that. Um, and if it's a high-performing team, that can actually work quite well because it would zigzag down and we can see how many stories we've delivered, how much value we've created. But on occasion, and often, teams aren't like that, and the, the response curve looks something like this. Now, that in itself is a problem that we need to look at and challenge with the teams. But in the meantime, it means that the burn down chart is not much use because on a given day, and this day in particular, what, can we, what, what do we know? We've not delivered anything, so it doesn't really tell us anything. So what I recommend is we can use two techniques. One is just to simply count the number of tasks, the number of post-it notes on your physical board. On average, they'll be about the same size, half a day to a day, maybe a day and a half. So you could say for a team of six, probably, I don't know, 60, um, tickets at the start and you can see how it progresses down. That works really well actually with some teams but I actually I prefer to go one step further. When we go into part two of sprint planning we actually task out and add hours to each task. Now I recognize that when we're planning we use story points to pull the work in and we use the empirical data of a previous sprint philosophy. So this is for a different reason. Before we go into that we need to talk about how many hours there are in a day. Most organisations, and here indeed, we, have eight, we are paid for eight hours a day, but we know that we probably only have six hours productive time. So in the time sheeting that we do to, capital, to capture the, the capex costs, we only include six hours a day. But for the purpose of planning, it's better to have a ceiling of the maximum, theoretical maximum number of hours we've got. So for a two-week sprint, that would be 80 hours per person. So if you've got a team of five, your maximum would be 400 hours. Let's say, for example, one person, though, is not at 100% utilised, they're only 80% because they're off for two days, for example, then that would be 64 hours. Incidentally, I'm including in, in this the sprint planning, the sprint review and retrospective. So the, the sprint starts at the start of planning and finishes at the end of the retrospective. And we're going to include all of that. We include refinement, off-project stuff, everything that the team does. So we have a theoretical maximum here, and that creates a ceiling up here that we know we can't reach. Obviously, everybody knows, we're not ever gonna to get to 400 hours for the team in two weeks, a team of five. But that just sets the expectation and we want to simplify the way we look at this. I actually, just before doing this video, we had a conversation about this, do we include refinement, what about the times it's off, what about effective time? And it confuses everybody, it confuses me as well. So what we want is a simple rule of thumb, a heuristic, and that's the 400 hours. How many hours can we actually pull in? Well, let's go back to our sprint backlog. In this case, I've got 31 points, and this particular team would have pulled in 31 points because they know that that's what they can uh, uh, usually and realistically achieve within a sprint. They've sized these stories, and these stories are relative size to previous stories. So there's a five, an eight, a 13, and another five. What we're doing in part two of sprint planning, once we've set the goal and pulled the story in, is we task it out. So each story in turn is we go through each item that each member of the team has to do. And remember with a user story, it's the whole team owns it. So the tester, the BA, the developer, if we need to see somebody from UX or a DBA, everybody's involved within the core scrum team, that's it, we capture. And we'll come to a, a number of hours. I don't know, it depends on the team, but in this case, let's say 60 hours. Then we go on to this next story, it's an eight pointer. So it's obviously larger, it's more, more complex and there's more work to do than the five pointer. We start tasking it out and let's say we get to 25 points. Well, immediately we know there's something wrong. This doesn't correlate. We don't want to directly correlate time with points, but this loosely, it should loosely correlate. It should be in and around larger than a five. I would expect somewhere like 80 maybe or 90, somewhere around that. 
It doesn't have to be precise, but it just gives you a sense of, are we missing something? Often I've done this with teams, and they've gone, oh yeah, sorry, we've forgotten this kind of stuff here. Or even better, they go, no, no, definitely 25 hours. This is actually probably a three, so product owner, we can probably pull in another five. And still retain 31 and deliver more value. So this helps us plan properly. So at the end, when I add these up, I generally, again, it's just my experience with the teams I've worked with, if they had a maximum of around 400, I generally get this number, somewhere around 250. With your team, it's gonna be different and it's gonna take time for you to get that gut feel of what it generally is. That number here has nothing to do with capitalization. It's got nothing to do with KPIs or performance reviews. And we know there's lots of other things that we do for the company that are not included here. This just helps us plan. This number then is used here. So we put 250 here. Then as we go through the sprint on every daily scrum, every 24 hour plan, our stories get pushed into done over here. What we do is we start to burn down. So it starts at 250. If in the first day the team collectively take away 20 hours, it's down to 230, which is somewhere here and so on. So then what we can find is, is it work remaining? Again, as we go along, we may have new tickets. We may have, and this is pro tip here, if you've got unplanned work, so defects or bugs that you didn't know had happened, or new things come in, you can actually burn it up here. So at the end, in the sprint retrospective, we can ask, why did we fail the sprint? Why did we flatline here? Well, because of these things that we didn't plan here. And then we can ask the question, what can we do better about it next time? This is a quite comprehensive agile nudge, isn't it? So, high level. In sprint planning, always set capacity as well as velocity. Go for the theoretical maximum of eight hours a day per person. When you pull in the stories, you use empiricism to pull in the user story points. Then you use the hours when you task it out to cross check with that. Then you use the hours in the burn down chart to see how you progress. You can always use um, th these as well if you like. And I recommend using burn up charts. One final thing, my strongest recommendation today is use physical. Look how easy this is. It's so much less easy and less transparent if we use it on virtual uh, boards in Jira or in Excel. So my recommendation for all teams here is to have a physical sheet of paper or whiteboard and do your burn down chart like that. Thank you.